So, have you heard what BlackRock thinks is the next big thing? Let's think with Fink. We believe the next step going forward will be the tokenization of financial assets. One of the largest on-chain protocols for real-world assets by TVL is Centrifuge. We reported last week that the Web3 Foundation aped a million dollars into tokenized US treasuries on Centrifuge. They joined Ave, who did a milli last quarter, and Frax, who laid down 20, bringing the total value locked on Centrifuge to almost $256 million, a number that's continued to rise throughout the bear against the DeFi winter. Besides the blockchain secured by Polkadot, investors and issuers can now enjoy a unified but multi-chain experience across Arbitrum, Base, Ethereum, and more. Could be why Masari put CEO Lucas Vogelsong on their list of people to watch this year. And Crane will have a deeper centrifuge report later in the week. New charts released based on the Dot Lake data set have revealed a nearly 100% increase in activity last month across the Polkadot network. Meme coin development is heating up with Exiled Racers, a popular race prediction game on Moonbeam, to hold leagues for earning pink, and Zeitgeist and Invarch committing to registering the pink token, earning rewards for their communities. Invarch is also supporting the dead token through their DAO staking initiative we spoke about last week. Merch shop opened. I had a fascinating conversation on Saturday for Space Monkeys in a secret location with the guy who did this. Oliver from the Polkadot Fellowship confirms that reducing the existential deposit, a major barrier to airdrops on Polkadot, including dead, is part of the coming runtime upgrade to Polkadot 1.1. And remember, tomorrow we have our monthly open dev call at 1.30 p.m. UTC. There will possibly be an announcement with another popular gaming project, this one partnering with Dead later today, and Unique Network has a $10,000 bounty for anyone who can create a great Dead game. The idea with meme coins, of course, is to introduce new people to the ecosystem. But can we make that experience easier for those coming from EVM? This $78,000 treasury spend proposal may be part of the solution, and Indico has the report. Will Polkadot eventually surpass Ethereum? In terms of tech, it already did. But how do we bring more people to the fast and secure Polkadot environment. A recent proposal submitted by Sasha, a rank 2 member of the fellowship, suggests that one reason might be technology aversion, the natural resistance of users towards learning a new tech. Their solution? Allow users to interact with Polkadot smart contracts using MetaMask or any tool operating via the Ethereum RPC, effectively empowering developers to introduce Ethereum to Polkadot's superior tech. For the research and delivery of a working proof of concept, Sasha is requesting 35,200 euros and an additional 32 for the next milestone of the project, amounting to 9,975. The proposal still has a long way to go, but currently enjoys over 90% approval from the community, which clearly sees great potential. Back to you, Jay. Thank you, sir. And in case you didn't know, the operations here on the Coos are largely supported by the Polkadot Treasury. And in the name of transparency to the DOT holders who support us, I'll be throwing it over to our treasurer, Blinken, every Monday for an update on the state of the Kusamarian Treasury. Blinken here with your weekly Kusamarian Treasury update. CoinGecko finally got a sub ticker so I can track that via the pie chart now. I initiated a multi-sig transaction to transfer some DOT from our pure proxy to our legacy wallet to rebalance holdings and prepare for payouts. The long way to Bitcoin ETF announcement has come and gone and markets are always forward looking. The halving is looming and everyone knows that the ETH ETF is next. Allocations are 33.6% staples, 38.6% DOT, and 25% IBTC. Good stuff. We'll head over now to our live attempts at governance show happening in 20 five minutes streamed on X and on YouTube. Remember, tomorrow at 1.30 p.m. UTC, we'll be live with Gavin Wood and the rest of the fellowship for our monthly open dev call. We'll see you there and have a great day, everybody.